So, like, the board is currently, like, more or less you, five people. Have you planned any sort of board rotations or something to keep the, the board, like, um, well, diverse and, like, not stale in, like, one, one set of, like, configuration here? Yeah, definitely. So pretty much we're going to be announcing this more formally in the coming month, but we're already oh, sharing this openly. This has been a discussion topic since the last board meeting, since we bootstrapped this initial concept that we were trying to go for. The idea that we're aiming for is uh, mandatory rotation periods, where right now it seems to be like around, we don't want it to be too short, where it's like someone comes on board and then gets the context and then get, leaves, but we also don't want it to be too long, so we're landing it around the two to three years per board member kind of time frame where that rotation then happens. This in no way stops people from being interested in participating in board topics to reach out to us and want to take part in the things that we're doing. A lot of the bureaucracy about the rotation is mainly because we need to make those changes with the government. So there's like liability if we get sued, stuff like that, but board's always open. Uh, I don't know if Tiofan wanted to add some more. Yeah. Oh, it's working. Amazing. Uh, I also wanted to add that that's something we started uh, looking at seriously, uh, well, then left on the back burner because emergency keep popping up every two weeks, is also to add more observers to the board. Because uh, as Ron said, like rotating the board is always a bit heavy on the paperwork on everything, and we want to have some continuity because um, if we change the board every two weeks, uh, that's not going to work. But that doesn't prevent us from like trying to do our best to stay as open as possible, and in particular, having more people help contribute with the board without needing to be formally board members, but uh, being there to help us uh, like have made, taking informed decisions, uh, making sure that we don't stay in a, in a silo of we all know each other, we have our own vision of the community, which slowly drifts away from what the rest of the community thinks. Um, so, I mean, uh, actually, Jonas is a, is a good example of that because he started as an observer uh, and, uh, well, slowly he, he graduated. Now he's a, he's a full-blown bo board member, but, uh, I mean, that's exactly the reason why we had Jonas in the first place. We wanted to add more like diversity and uh, new 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 viewpoints to the board, and uh, Jonas was like we talked to number of people, and he really had a. <clears throat> we both like resonated on some things in that uh, we like we understood that we had the same fa we're facing the same problems, and at the same time he had some really different answers than ours on a number of topics. And that was not something that we could le leave aside. So um, that was the first experiment with that, and I hope we can formalize that and move it much, much, much further. It's even really practical. The idea that we're going to be publicizing very soon is, sorry, one, two, three. Can you guys still hear me? I can shout. It's OK. Um, all right, there we go. So the idea is that there's going to be rotation, because that is, in general, to combat stagnation. Even if someone's doing a great job, at some point, we want to make sure that we refresh. If the community and, and in general, that person comes back later on to the board, cool, but we want to give that opportunity. The second thing is, I can't emphasize this enough, this is not a closed club. Like, we're online, we're communicating all the time. If you're interested in what we're doing, you're interested to participate in a board meeting, you want to join, just like, reach out to us and talk. and, and it is just a lot of hours that you just need to be able to put in. Uh, there are ways to do that. And I think Domin wanted to add also a few more items. Yeah. Does it work? Ah, there you go. Um, if, if you are or if you are a part of open source community that you think they're doing this well and, and you know, in a good way, then I think it's, it's a good time to, to come to us and, and suggest um, and point out. I personally and I think quite a few people in this room are from used to be part of the Plone Foundation, which to me is like a North Star of how open source communities are run. Um, and they actually, in 20 years, they changed their bylaws of the foundation only twice. And recently they did it, I think, this year. And the, the thing they added is that the board rotates not at the same time because that loses continu continuity, which means that you know all the information, all the context is lost. So we, we, we are trying to, to also take that lesson and, and, and well, as we rotate the board, it, it would go gradually in steps. Um, and all, all these things that, you know, communities that are 20, 30 years old have learned, it's good to incorporate now because all these things are then harder to change once they're uh, implemented in a process. Hello. 
Cool. All right, next question, Lorenzo. Hi. Um, yeah, the next question that I have is, w how do you rotate? Like, who's, how do you choose who, who replaces? So in general, I think that's a great question. In general, the things that we've been looking at is to keep the concept of a duocracy. So this is something that we're exploring because we have a little bit more time before we need to make that formal. Up until now, it's been rather ad hoc. Like if there's a community member that's very passionate, has four hours to come in and, and sit on keeping the lights on level stuff and not the technical stuff, then it's like a discussion that we're open to have. Moving forward, we've been talking to a lot of different communities and the things that we've seen kind of be more successful is reducing the bureaucracy of that mechanism. So one of the ideas we've been talking about is that eventually you will have a foundation and kind of something like a Nick's core team on the technical side, and together they will do the rotation maneuver. So let's say, you know, X years have passed, I am, I am out, someone needs to come in, there are duties that need to be filled, right? Treasury, partnerships, doesn't matter what, it's non-technical duties, and people can self-nominate or nominate each other, and then just like, a group of the foundation, Nick's core team, team leads together would make the, the decision, pretty much. But it's still not, there's still no mechanism in place. Like, um, is it what you described is an idea? Yeah, there is no mechanism in place. Like right now, we don't have an, a, like a Nick's core team where it's things that we want to work on, and, uh, but we have a bit more time and we will have that by the time that rotation needs to take place. Thing that we want to address this year, I think. Yeah. Um, just for context, um, we, we we meet every two weeks, and so the the throughput that we have is not huge, and we had a lot of groundwork to put in place. And for us, it's all very important that we're we, we're just here as individuals, and we're not working for our company when we're in the board. Um, it doesn't answer entirely your question, but I think that's important. Another idea we've been thinking about is reducing the power of the foundation so that we have another potentially core team that can make technical decisions and more cultural decisions. And then the foundation is just an interface with paperwork, legal. It's basically not very exciting. And <laughs> I don't think many people want to do that. Um, but I think, that's, I think the question behind the rotation is, you know, what are the risks and we want to avoid this to be captured or anything like that. And by removing the power, I think that's also alleviates uh, some of the risk. And this kind of touches the whole thing I just threw out here with no context, but like a Nick's core team that is more of a technical governance body. And it kind of goes to Jonas's point. But just to add to what Jonas said, the uh, foundation has never had any sort of influence on technical issues. Uh, it's always up to the community to make technical decisions. Uh. Right. Hello. Uh, next question uh, is Jorik. So if you have other questions, raise your hand before this question is over so I can start migrating. Hello. Um, it says on the talk description that you intend to share something about the roadmap for the coming year. Is there anything you'd like to say about that? Uh, we, we kind of ended up sharing it during the next State of the Union. Uh, there's a lot of critical areas that we want to diverge a lot of efforts or most of the efforts that we can. Things come up in between, like you've seen, and they just take all of our focus and every living hour that we have away from those efforts. But a lot of those things are about exactly that, like how do we empower decision making in the community level so that there's no high towers, everything's at the ground level, people are unblocked, uh, teams are empowered, a lot of this has mutual connections into even funding that we've been talking about a lot. How do we get more funds into the community and then how do we disperse those funds very quickly to the most prioritized areas? Like there's a lot of that that we're looking at. And then there's obviously also the keeping the lights on bureaucratic. We're starting to think about like the, the trademark policy. How do we even do that as a community? I think that needs to be a committee across the community and not the foundation. So there's a lot of items there, but I'm sure other people have Thoughts? It's three buckets. It's please sign up. <laughs> um, 
So you, you, you've talked multiple times about being bottlenecked in terms of time. It's a, a kind of a position of honor. You're not getting paid for this. Uh, what's your plans to alleviate that bottleneck? Yeah, good question. Uh, one of the things we started working on is actually hiring uh, an admin person. And this person would allow to process things like bank statements more, because th this is also taking a lot of our time. Um, so you're the first hire, and this is going to be the <laughs> second hire. <laughs> And another thing also on, a, on not being a bottle, not bottlenecked on time is uh, making sure that the community works in a way that uh, we actually don't have anything to do except a bit of paperwork here and there. Uh, yeah, Jonas said this morning about the moderation team that uh, if you don't know about us, it's that because we're doing, a, it means that we're doing our job properly. Uh, hopefully the same for the, for the foundation. Uh, hopefully we can just, um, so c currently the foundation happens to be a bottleneck for a lot of things because this is the only like official structure in place in the community. Hopefully this shouldn't be the case anymore in six year, one, six months, one year. And things could, should just... 60 years. In, in 60 years, exactly. Uh, just, just for my retirement. Uh, and, and that would mean that we don't have to be a bottleneck anymore because we would be much less needed except in case of emergencies because there's always emergencies. Okay, uh, I, I just have a question. I don't know if it was asked, so sorry if it was. Um, so the foundation exists, and there are also other entities, sometimes legal, sometimes not, uh, like Nix Community, which seems to fulfill like a different role from the foundation, but one that seems to be sometimes overlapping the foundation. My question for you is like, what are your thoughts? What do you envision regarding those entities? Which Jonas, you're you're one of the member. And like, I like the idea of having redundancy of the foundation on some aspects. Um, what do you think about sharding the foundation in different countries, different sub-communities? Sub For example, um, like there is a super big um, community in China in NixOS. I'm not sure we have a lot of representation here because, of course, it's a European conference. Uh, it's not easy to come here. Um, like, I ha just have all those thoughts regarding foundation representation, extra. Yeah, so one example is that we have been looking into creating a charitable entity in the US that, that would make it easier to accept donations there. Uh, I don't think we've looked at other forms of uh, sharding. Uh, so, uh, I think from my end, this touches again the concept of making decisions. At the end of the day, why do we want to shard or why do we want to distribute, right, or become a distributed kind of body? Um, it's by allowing and enabling and empowering, well, allowing is, I'm going to scratch that word, not allowing, enabling and empowering individuals, organizations or teams, whatever it is, to make those decisions in absent of us, in absent of you, right? So I think that's part of the things that we want to focus on in the coming year. Uh, just on a personal note, I'm part of too many teams. <laughs> so please uh, come join the teams. <laughs> so I don't have to be part of so many teams. And Jonas and loves meeting, so he's just... <laughs> uh, I think for the, just for the historical uh, context, when I created the Nix community, it wasn't clear how to participate in NixOS. <laughs> and I think if we fix some of the things in NixOS, we need maybe less Nix community, or I suggest I donate Nix community so I, there's no overlap between Nix community and the foundation. Yeah, ju just one extra point. Uh, you mentioned, for example, the, the Chinese uh, Nix OS community who is essentially not represented here uh, as an example. So I think there's two levels here. Like on one level, I, I believe it's important to have like one single representative of the uh, community, if, if only for like, I don't know, partnerships we might have with the big tech companies or like GitHub, Amazon. It, it, it's important that they have one person or one entity to talk to. Uh, on the other hand, I definitely like, I think we are all aligned on the fact that uh, like Nix is definitely not meant to be like a centralized community, everything resolving around the foundation. 
And uh, it's great. I mean, Nixcon is uh, indeed an, an interesting example. There have been more and more talks about like making either other Nixcons on other continents or like other things which would not be Nixcon, which would have their own identities, but like other Nix conferences otherwise. And I think these are like great examples of like having you'd still need this one single entity, but that doesn't mean that the whole community is supposed to be like one big monolithic body. Good luck, Matthew. There you go. So you've talked a lot about administrative responsibility and how that's going to be split up. Um, how is like the technical responsibility, or like, are there any updates on the next core team? How do you envision, yeah, technical responsibility working? So um, on one side, I think we don't. Uh, in the sense that uh, this is explicitly not the foundation's role to have a handle on that. Now, on the other side, obviously, I think we're like in a special position where the foundation has, I mean, it, it, it's always ambiguous. The foundation has no power, and at the same time, it has some power. So uh, we probably need to, like, at some point, get the ball moving. Uh, but uh, so talking only for myself, I don't know what the others would uh, mean to that. But I really hope that this comes like from the community rather than from the foundation. That we can just, um, I mean, like give our financial and administrative blessing on the, the on the, whatever would be the the next core team. But uh, yeah, as Jonas said, uh, he's already on too many teams. I think that's the case for most of us uh, right here. So uh, we really hope that this can be distributed work. Yeah, we, so oh, it works. Um, so we had just the governance workshop, and you know, this is the kind of things we want to work with the community because we we don't think that you know it it should be really our work to to organize. We what we what we are careful about is is to balance things and to 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 make sure that everyone is heard and you know that we keep the community going. But at the same time, for decisions that. So, you know, sometimes in the open source, it's, it's hard to know who makes the decision, and these are the kind of questions we are asking. Um, but we don't have a clear answer yet. This is future work. Um. Um, you talked a lot about, like, rights men, uh, like, like, like governance and, like, administrative tasks. And like, how do you manage permissions and like user guides? And when like a member changes, do you have any plans on how that would go? Um, so we don't have a bus factor of just one person having access to, for example, the Equinix uh, build machines or like uh, the funding accounts. Sorry, just to just to uh, Zach, do you mind repeating the question from your end? Um, and we're just having a hard time from there. You have, like, like you talked about your administrative tasks, like from checking emails to like um, managing the Equinix build machines and stuff like that. Um, and you also talked about uh, swapping board members um, in like time frames of like two to three years. Do you have already plans about how you handle permissions, like who gets access to what machines and like what accounts? I, th I think that's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. So the. Um the infra team actually has the most access, and the foundation only has access to things like the Gandhi, uh, so that they can hold the domain. And then the infra team is supposed to have the credentials to set up the DNS records and things like that. And so basically, we're already trying to split things up in that way. But to add to that, I mean, a lot of those resources are owned by the foundation. So, for example, our AWS account is now uh, fully owned by the foundation. Previously, it was uh, owned by a sponsor. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's a property of the foundation now. Yeah. When, when distinction that I think can be helpful also for that is to distinguish the foundation from the board. I mean, the, the foundation is that legal entity which, yeah, the foundation owns some hardware, owns, like, has the money for doing that. Uh, as the board, we're not the foundation. We're just, like, group, like we, uh, well, the board of the foundation. But that doesn't mean that, like, for example, the infra team in the, like, in its 
faculty of like controlling the uh, the infrastructure does that like as part of the foundation so like the, the foundation and the, and the board are two different things hello so uh, we're gonna cut things short a little bit to try to get things back on schedule so our next speaker is Ryan Mulligan standing right next to me you ready to go okay all right, thank you, Zach. Yeah.